Hello, everybody, and welcome to Q and C of the day. I'll get to the C part in a second. Uh, welcome to the office. So uh, this this question, which is a pretty good one, it came to us from a subscriber by the name of Mr. JX. This came via uh, Twitter. So Mr. JX says, or asked the question, hey, I've been watching your YouTube channel for a few months. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. And he says, this might seem like a stupid question. Before we go on, let me just say one thing. Uh, there are no stupid questions. I know everybody hears that and they're like, no, there's stupid questions. That may be true, actually. But uh, in reality, if you have the question, I guarantee there's like a hundred other people behind you that have that exact same question. So just ask the question. And uh, if it's something I can answer real quick, uh, then I'll probably fire it back. But uh, for this one, I want to do a cue of the day. So the question he has is, uh, however, I feel uncertain about some projects. I understand that Bitcoin is seen as valuable because it can be seen as a store of value like gold or potentially become a decentralized payment system and is not vulnerable to our artificial inflation. That part is very true. It is, a, uh, uh, it is a hardening of a digital asset. But are all other cryptocurrencies, keyword here, currencies, aiming to replace our conventional forms of money? For example, products like Chainlink, VeChain, and Cardano, are they products you should invest in because they provide useful blockchain services? Yes. Such as supply chain efficiency and Oracle Network, or because they will be used as a form of currency? In other words, should I buy Chainlink and bet because they, they, they will replace the US dollar or the pound of the euro or the yuan or something like that? So I'm gonna make this super simple. Uh, yes, that is exactly what they're gonna do. I'm just kidding. No, what, what it really comes down to is this. Let me back up. First of all, in this space, we have used cryptocurrencies to describe everything. And I think it's a mistake. It's why I named my channel Digital Asset News. So, and this comes all the way back from like 2010 you know, back in the day when the Bitcoin maximalists were just getting started and everything was about currency. It was about replacing the dollar. It was about making not a, not a store of value, but being able to pay somebody for all over the world instantaneously like that. As time has moved on, Bitcoin's not going to be a currency. It's just not. Now, I could be wrong, but from what I see right here, I think it's going to be digital gold. And I've talked about that numerous times. So when we see, keep saying cryptocurrencies, people who are new or people who are coming in or people who are going to be coming in, they will look at this and say, uh, this is all currency. I don't understand what's going on. So I think, my personal opinion, we should always be saying cryptocurrency and digital assets. We are in 2020, going to 2021. Uh, Bitcoin is going to be a store of value. That's what I firmly believe. XRP uh, may be a form of currency at some point. Depends on what the government does. I don't know. Right now, it seems to be working like a stable coin. And um, uh, besides that, Stellar uh, could be one of those as well. You could also look at Monero and maybe Litecoin. I, I, I really don't know as far as the currency side, but I see a potential upside for digital assets. So to answer your question, Mr. JX, Mr. Jax, Jax, um, we are not investing in these to replace currency. That is not what's going to happen. I mean, later on, uh, it, it could be in a basket, but that's a whole other video. So if you're going to invest in something like a Cardano, like an Ethereum, like a Tezos, um, these types of things are for smart contracts. And what's great about smart contracts is that they can do a lot of things like decentralized finance, like voting, like putting different things like your healthcare records on uh, on a blockchain, or like do, recording um, different types of things for mortgages and for different assets. So they're just right there. And, and we could even replace you know lawyers to some degree as far as contracts go. So think about that and think about Bitcoin. Can Bitcoin do that? No, I don't think so. Bitcoin couldn't even handle all the people that were coming in in 2017. And there wasn't even that many. So if you think that it's going to happen like that, I mean, Bitcoin maximalists will say that Bitcoin's the end all be all. And that's their thing. I tend to disagree. I tend to think that there is a big room uh, for a lot of different things for this space to really advance. So that's the part of smart contracts. VeChain, I see it as uh, supply chain metrics or tracking. So if you have something like um, products coming out of China, not to get on down on China, but let's be honest, there's a lot of, lot of uh, counterfeit type of things coming out of there. It'd be uh, pretty important to know things like, is this a real Chanel bag? Is this a real Nike golf driver? Is this really baby formula from the correct factory? Uh, I need to know all these things because I mean, I mean, the products are something, but like uh, food and baby formula and medicine, just to name a few, that'd be kind of important to make sure that we know exactly where it is. And if we can track it on the blockchain, that would be huge. And then on, to get back to the smart contracts, that's why I like Chainlink. 
and the other one, bam, one starts with a B, I forgot. Yeah. Tell me what it is in the comments section, I always forget. Uh, but that is another Oracle. And what's great about blockchains is that, you know, they can, they can do a lot of great things. One thing they cannot do is pull out outside data. So if we wanna know things for decentralized finance, things like the price of some type of coin or interest rates or weather or whatever else or APRs, we can't get that on the blockchain. We have to pull that from outside. That's why Chainlink and Oracles are so important. So all these things that we're talking about, let me just make clear, they're not gonna be currencies. They're not gonna be currencies. They're valuable because they do certain things. Um, and I see them as you know doing very well moving forward. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, if, uh, if you have any other things, just put in the comments section, I'll do my best to answer those. So that's the first part of the Q. So the Q and the C stands for, now what do you think? Uh, correction of the day. So the correction of the day, yesterday I had uh, done a correction. I had talked about the Daedalus wallet and there was supposed to be a new version, version 2.2. And then when I looked on the website, it just said 2.1. I didn't realize, because I didn't know, that on the top right hand corner is a little button called, well, there's a little tab that says flight. And flight is when you click on to get all the different updates for all the different things they are testing. And that's where they put 2.2. So eh, didn't know, now I know, fantastic. So that's one thing. And then yesterday we did a video talking about how I compared the PayPal mafia, all the different guys who had created PayPal and then moved on and created thing, little things like you know YouTube and uh, SpaceX and Tesla and you know, little, little little stuff, LinkedIn. And then I compared that to um, the Ethereum Mafia, or what I call the Ethereum Mafia, which are all the gentlemen that had created or co-founded or founded, however you want to say it, uh, Ethereum. And we took a look at that, and one of them was Amir Chetrit. And Amir Chetrit, I did a Google search, and I tried to find him, and there was a couple websites. And unfortunately, uh, those two websites that I found had the picture of Sundar Pichai, who is the Google CEO, or, or sorry, Alphabet and Google CEO. And uh, when I saw that, I go, oh, that, that's him. I did a couple more searches and there he was. So uh, just misinformation. So on the um, uh, thumbnail of the video, I changed it from uh, Sundar's image to just a generic uh, looking icon of a person because I cannot find this guy anywhere. And that's it. So little mistake, but the rest of the information is all good. Uh, hopefully you like the video and whatnot. I think. Moving forward, uh, I will probably be doing uh, these Q and Cs uh, every day because let's be honest, uh, everybody makes mistakes, right? No one is perfect. It is a weird time we live in though, don't you think? That uh, everybody who is wrong is never wrong. Everybody's an expert. Everybody knows exactly what's gonna happen. And when you call them on it, like, no, 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 I didn't say that, I said this. Or I said this, this, and this. <sighs> I gotta tell you, uh, sometimes it's refreshing when someone just stands up and goes, I screwed up, uh, that was my mistake, I'm in there. I don't know, tell me what you think about that. Uh, but that's it for the Q and C of the day, let's jump back. All right, so thanks for sticking with me to the end. I just wanna say thanks to all the people who've joined up for Digital Asset News. If you don't know, in the bottom right hand corner, there's a join now button. It doesn't give me anything special, it's just a buck 99 and uh, it's like a tip. So I just wanna, what I do is I just do random shout outs for all the members. So uh, shout out Sean Thompson, Dawid Brzezinski, I know I said Brzezinski right. I'm pretty sure I did. And then we got Keith K, TTP911, nice. Gold backed crypto, interesting. All right, soft, <laughs> eating my shids. And then Mo, Mo Zanel. All right, so thanks everybody uh, who has signed up. Really appreciate it. Uh, also, if you like those types of videos or this type of video, there's gonna be two more that's gonna pop up on your left and right. Uh, go ahead and check those out. I don't have any control of that. YouTube pretty much takes care of that. Just like the uh, ads you may have seen in the beginning, middle, or end, I have no control over that. If you saw a scam ad, uh, report it to uh, YouTube or just you know give them a shout and say, hey, this is a scam. They'd love to hear from you. So that's it for today. Thanks for sticking with me. See you on the next one.